Hi, I'm Anne from Game Like a Mother. Today I'm going to provide a rules overview and review of Soggy Doggy. It's ages four and up, two to four players, and it takes 10 minutes. Let me show you how to play. The goal of the game is to be the first to get your token completely around the board and back to the start spot. For game setup, there's a little bit of setup the first time you play this game. You're supposed to wash your soggy doggy gently with uh, cold water and maybe some mild soap. Uh, there's a little plastic frame to put inside the bathtub um, that's very easy to assemble. And then you just put the little rubber soggy doggy over it. There are two batteries that do not come with uh, the set that you need to have in order to play the first time. Uh, they are not your standard batteries. They're the ones that we use in our hex bugs. They're the little very tiny 1.5 volt uh, batteries. So make sure you have those before you tell a child you're going to play this game with them. Um, but after that, it's pretty easy. You fill up the bathtub about as high as you can without it overflowing. Uh, you were supposed to push the button with a paw on it a few times to have the shower primed and ready and have some water on the doggy. Um, each player picks a token and places it in the start spot. And then you have the youngest player go first and they roll the die and then they go to that color on the board, the first unoccupied spot. So we'll go ahead and have red go. They go to this pink spot and you just do whatever the spot says. If it has uh, the paw print on it, you're going to push down the paw print the number of times on the spot. So here you'd pushed it down twice and that's just putting more water on the soggy doggy. Uh, if so, then if the next person also rolls a pink, they would skip ahead of that spot. So that's blue. They would skip ahead of that and go to the next pink spot, which is a picture of the bone with the number two by it. And then you turn it uh, clockwise twice. And then, oh my goodness, that's what happens sometimes. The soggy doggy starts to shake in the bath. Kids love that. Uh, if that happens, uh, you, you can turn it off by moving the bone a half spin, uh, a half turn backwards, uh, and that will turn it off. Uh, my children get scared very easily by games, and this was fun and cute and exciting. You can see there's just like a few little splatters of, of uh, a little bit of water go, gets shaken out, but it isn't bad. Uh, so nothing gets soaked while you're playing this game. We have often played this on carpet, and it's been fine. If the doggy does shake on your turn, you're the one to make it go, then your token goes back to home. But after that, you can't get sent back home again. You get to have the corresponding little plastic token that goes with your person. And so then the next time, if that person got to that spot, uh, then, then, and the doggy started to shake, they have the token so they couldn't be sent back anymore. So that's all the game is. You're, you're rolling the die, moving to the nearest unoccupied spot of that color, doing whatever it says. This person has to turn it twice too. Okay, didn't happen for them. Uh, there's a few other specialty dice rolls that can happen. Uh, with the paw print, you, if that person, uh, if yellow got that, you move in front of the spot, one spot in front of the, fur, the person who's furthest along. Uh, and if you get, and then he would have to do the actions, which again is just turn this twice. Let's see if that's enough to make the dog. Oh, there goes the doggy again. Turn it back half one. This person would go back, but then they'd also have their token. So you can only be sent back once. Uh, and then the only other thing that can happen is if you roll a question mark, that just means you roll again. And so you roll again, go to whatever color and whoever successfully makes it around the whole board first. It doesn't matter if the doggy shakes a bunch. Once you make it around, the bath time is over, doggy is thoroughly washed, and whoever made it is the winner. So that's how to play Soggy Doggy. The target demographic for this game is preschoolers. The rule complexity is low, as it should be, and uh, how competitive is this game? It is also pretty low. You are not here as much for competition as you are for the novelty factor and because it's a dog and it's cute and there's water involved, which makes it more exciting if you're a kid. 
Uh, the replay value is medium for this game just because there's a little bit of setup involved before you play. There's water involved. It doesn't make that much mess, but still you have to go and get the water and that can be tricky when there are preschoolers involved. And really just the biggest sticking point is that you have to set it out to dry afterwards. So there's just a little bit of effort involved whenever you end up playing the game. Uh, if you're looking for similar games, I would recommend that you check out Sink and Sand. It's by the same game publisher and it's basically like Kerplunk meets Don't Break the Ice and uh, it has kinetic sand involved and kids lose it over this game and you're just trying to have your explorer person be the last to fall through the quicksand. Uh, super fun. And then the other one I love for this age is Orangutang. You are putting little fruit weights on a orangutan hanging from a vine and you don't want to be the one to make him go twang. And kids love this game, win or lose, which means it's always a win as far as I'm concerned. But if you have a child who loves dogs and wants a cute little game on that theme, then you should check out Soggy Doggy. Thank you and see you next time from Game Like a Mother.